Lauren from The Blend Team and today I want to talk to you about Shopify Flows. Um, if you are a Shopify Plus merchant, you might be familiar with Shopify Flows, you might not be. Um, and that's why I just want to take you through them today and show you some of my kind of top templates that I think you could really benefit from right now. Um, so the main kind of benefits of Shopify Flows is there's sort of two. There's one that you can automate a lot of your manual processes straight from Shopify Flows. And I think that's really important to focus on right now, especially as, you know, everyone's working from home mostly. People are focusing more on their business and obviously making sure people are happy. Um, there could be, obviously, you might have less customers right now. You could have more customers right now. It really depends on your sort of situation. And having something within Shopify that can help you automate some of your processes is going to be really helpful for you now, but also in the future. Um, and the other benefit of Shopify Flows is it lets you connect apps in a completely different way to what you've been able to do before. Um, so let me just go through some of my kind of top uh, ideas templates here. So I've listed a few below here, but I'm just going to show you what everything kind of looks like. So this is how the templates are, and they work um, like a workflow, like a flow chart, like Clavio flows, where you have your trigger, you have a condition, and you have an action. Um, and what, what Shopify has done is they've listed them out into like a certain order. So they have all, uh, as you can see, and then they have buyer experience. So, you know, you can see here that this is an app one where if someone raises a question uh, with GrowWave, you can get it registered in Gorgeous. Or, for example, with the wishlist one, you can integrate it with Clavio. Um, and, you know, anytime that you see a brand's logo here, you know it's going to be some sort of integration with another app, which you might not be able to see normally. Um, in particular, obviously, like a reviews one. If someone writes a negative review, it'd be really good for you to be able to go uh, out to them and see how they feel. Um, and this will let you do that. Um, so here's kind of like the buyer experience one. Um, you can see a few push hour ones. Um, so this one here, for example, send a push notification when an order is shipped. This could be really helpful right now um, because obviously push notifications, you don't need a phone number or an email. It just pops up as a browser notification. Um, and what this would do is it just lets people know that their order is shipped and it just adds that reassurance that you're still going to be serving them. Um, and with push notifications as well, because it's a browser, it just pops up on your phone and it doesn't require you having an email, having a phone number, anything like that. It uses the browser that's on your phone to be able to push those notifications out. Um, simple things like just being able to connect a spreadsheet so you can keep track of things as well. Um, obviously going into customers, this is the one that I think will be very, very helpful with um, kind of organization and tagging and how you'd be able to integrate this maybe with Clavio, for example. Um, and what it does is it just organizes them, obviously based, you can read them all for yourselves here. Um, you can tag, obviously, if someone's creating an account on the store, for example, if you wanted to give them some sort of reward off the back of that. Um, what you can do with Shopify tags is you can actually create a segment within Clavio that says, if tagged with this Shopify tag, put them into the segment, and then you can create your own email flow based on that segment. Or for example, if you've got some people who have purchased from your retail store, so your POS, um, compared to your online store, you could maybe create a segment of those people and reach out to them via email and say, hey, you know, the retail store's not open right now, but why don't you have a look online and see if there's anything that you fancy? So there's quite a few things that you can do in here and kind of make things a little bit easier for yourself as well. Um, um, another one that you might be interested in is obviously if people are returning things and things like that. Um, inventory and merchandising, I think, is going to be the one that's going to help you as a business automate things more. Um, simply like if you don't want certain products to show in your store, if they're out of stock, if you're having issues trying to get them in, you could set up a flow that automatically takes them off the store if they're out of stock. And therefore, you know, you might reduce the amount of people asking for them. You would reduce the amount of things on your store that would look out of stock if that looks slightly bad for you. Um, it's really kind of up to you on how you feel about that one, but that's something that it can do automatically for you. Um, you can create some urgency on low stock items. So if you, you know, you've got some items again that you're struggling to, you can create, uh, you can merchandise them so that they show in a sale collection, for example, and then they can hide as soon as they're out of stock. Um, you could promote certain products and things like that. Um, and then standardized tagging, I think, is going to be really, really important. And I feel like more agent, more businesses need to utilize this because 
it would just be so easy if you get and get a new product say it's a t-shirt for example and if you put it on the store and as long as you named it with t-shirt in it automatically adds to your t-shirt collection it would just be so much easier for you when it comes to adding new products on or organizing them having that standard structure would just be very very helpful for you all uh, with automating that side of your business coming into loyalty you have a lot with loyalty line here um, and a lot of them are based on like if people give you reviews, if they're doing referrals, if they're adding uh, wish list items. Um, and you can use this in a combination with other apps like, um, for example, you could do a uh, if someone's had a second order, add 100 loyalty line points to their account and send a push notification to tell them you've added on those points. So you can connect push out and, lo and loyalty line together, despite the fact that they don't actually have an integration, but Shopify Flows lets you have that integration. Um, and so there's a lot of other ones here. Obviously, you can see Smile as well as on there for different loyalty points again. Um, if we go into orders, um, something here that might be very helpful for you is if you just want to know what currencies people are using, if people are ordering from particular products, you know that you could create a segment of those people in Klaviyo and again, just let them know that um, those are the products they like. Um, you could tag new people if they've got free shipping already. So obviously at the moment, it's sort of half expected to do free shipping, but obviously you need to be able to do it in a way that works best for you. So it might be useful for you, to, for you to know who's already had free shipping. So then you can update your thank you flow or your your welcome flow, anything like that with a condition that says, if they've already had free shipping, don't offer it again, that type of thing. Um, and then you do have um, some promotions. I think another one that is very, very helpful that I haven't seen just off the top of my head, but I know I've got it in here, is just if, you know, you've had any high risk orders come through or anyone's cancelled it or anything like that, just having that automated process in place here. Um, and what this one does, actually we'll have a look at it for you just so you can get an idea of Shopify flow. So when you create a workflow, it basically comes in like this and it shows you what the workflow is, shows you any recent activity and it shows you any results. If you want to edit the workflow, you just go into edit here and it will load. And you can see it's just a very, very simple flow chart structure. So this is the trigger. If an order is uh, risk analyzed and if order risk is leveled as high, so you could change this to medium if you wanted to, you could change it to low, probably you wouldn't do low, but medium or high, you could change it to. Um, and then it says, if no, then nothing happens. But if yes, what it's gonna do is it's gonna automatically cancel the order for a fraudulent it's then gonna send an email to the customer. And what it can do is it can pull the order name and it can pull the customer's email and it can tell them, uh, you know, hi, we've canceled this order because it's come up as high risk. You can then add a tag to the customer, just like high risk, just so you know in the future if something is not quite right. Again, you could create a segment for that in Clavio and you might wanna suppress people who are high risk. And then you can also tag an order, an order tag on there. But you see how this kind of just automates the whole process for you. Um, and there's lots of possibilities with different things that you can do here as well. So let's just go back and see if there's anything else that I've missed. Obviously, as we've discussed, I think standardizing tagging is gonna be really imp important. Uh, tagging those in-person people, see if you can try and get those who've purchased from your retail store, see if they're gonna want to purchase online, obviously to help them if you are closed. Um, but just have a look around on Shopify Flows if you've got it. Um, there's so much you can do here to help automate your own process. And not only does that make things easier for you, it also means that you'll be able to provide better customer service for your, your customers and you can just take the time off and the kind of the hardship off that with what a lot of things that you're already doing. Um, if you have any questions on this, then please let the Blend team know. Otherwise, thank you for watching.